So I know, I know, I know that you love TED Talks. You love the speakers who come on the stage and own this, yes? But do you know what it takes to give a perfect TED Talk? Before I share that with you, let me tell you something very interesting. It was the month of August when I received the invite to give my second TED Talk. And now, as everyone would expect, getting a TED invite is a very big thing. And I was super happy that, yes, I'm going to be on a TEDx stage. So I happily replied to them that, yes, I will be there on that day. Not realizing that there is a challenge. My tickets were already booked. My wife had planned a one-month Euro trip. And now the irony is that if you have planned the vacation and cancel the plan for a TEDx, it's okay. But if your wife plans the vacation and you cancel, it is TEDx. Yes or no? So I was very mindful, but then it was TEDx, so I said a yes to it. I said, okay, I just have one month with me. I'll see how things would move on. Eventually, we were on our way to the mountains of, of Switzerland and the Iceland and the Rome and this and that and this and that. And then one fine evening, I had my wife next to me rubbing my arm and saying, Divas, you see, the sky is beautiful in Iceland. The clear sky is there. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. My talk can be around pollution, three ways to have beautiful skies in India. So a part of me was still occupied with what I would say in my talk. I was there with her physically, but then mentally I was still somewhere else that what I would say in my talk. That's the first thing which goes in the mind of any TEDx speaker, that what should I say that will just blow everyone's mind. Eventually, I spoiled her trip. Imagine going to Europe and locking yourself up inside the room for three days and asking your wife that, okay, I am here. You can go and explore the place. I'm talking about Amsterdam, which has good reasons, good, good incentives to explore the place. But I chose to stay inside the room and ask my wife to go around and explore. Why? Because I had to make the talk perfect one. Anyway, I came back from Europe and two days later I was supposed to go for my talk. Because of excessive air travel, I had developed some sensation in my left ear. I went to an ENT surgeon the moment I landed. He says, Devas, because of excessive like, air travel, the air pressure imbalance, I, I advise you, do not go for the next flight. It will be harmful for you. Don't do that. But since you have committed, you had to show up. So anyway, you had to show up. So you went to the airport, you took the flight, you reached the venue and, and, and I reached the venue. And the next day I was supposed to go for the talk. Can you imagine what happened next? I had spent countless number of hours to prepare for that talk. I had sacrificed my vacation for which my wife will never forgive me for that TED talk. And then I went on that stage, just like this. As I had prepared really well, every word, every gesture, every voice modulation was perfectly mastered. And then I spoke. And after a few minutes into the talk, my slide changer, my presenter, stopped working. I'm like, hello, I need some help. And then the team says, sir, 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 sir hold on. And someone comes rushing, fixes my presenter, my slide changer, and then I continued. If this wasn't enough, a few more minutes later, this was not working. I was blabbering, but there was no sound at the other side. The team says, sir, 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 hold on. And then they replaced the batteries. And I was standing over there like a fool, showing that, yes, I'm very much comfortable because as a public speaker, you have been trained and taught that even if things are ugly, things go out of your hand. Put up this false face, 
showcase us while the world sees oh my god he's so comfortable but deep within i felt like you meet me outside i'll show you what i'm feeling if this wasn't enough after a few more minutes i get to hear someone checking the mic from the backstage check check one two check and i was standing on that stage give, giving the talk imagine a talk which was supposed to be perfect was marred because of these beautiful incidents eventually i managed to survive those 18 minutes and when i get down from the stage or when i got on to the the stage i i asked myself that what was this i i felt unhappy i felt that all the preparation all these hours were for this and then i learned something about myself i realized that no matter what you do some things cannot be in your control yes you won't believe it that talk was never uploaded even after pursuing for one year they say you know what it doesn't meet the standards so we cannot upload that talk I went through a state and I asked myself what could be the reason why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling and I learned something about perfectionism Are you a perfectionist Well perfectionist is a word which we casually use in an interview when the interviewer asks hey what are your weaknesses and you say you know what my weakness is I'm a perfectionist that's how we use the word perfectionist However the irony is that it has a much more damaging impact on you the word perfectionist Have you ever wondered why someone is a perfectionist What's wrong with being a perfectionist Think about it What's wrong with being a perfectionist You might say oh Devas it's a good thing if I'm asking for something more something better and better and better I'm raising the level raising the bar what's wrong in being a perfectionist but when it becomes an obsession it does more damage to you in my research in my observation i found out that people who are perfectionists map their self worth with their work what does that mean number one they have a low self worth they have a low self worth and then they equate their self worth with the work that they do if the work is good they feel happy about themselves if the work is bad their self worth goes down now over here over here when i was working on my presentation my talk i was trying to make it perfect so that everyone applauds for it yes my self worth would be over here but there's something which goes wrong as in my case some things will not be in your control i call it as an loc locus of control so whenever you are stuck Take your hand and draw a circle. Place whatever you can control in that circle. Like for example, my response to that situation while being on that stage was in my control. The mic not working, the presenter not working, someone checking the mic from the backstage was not in my hand. And that does not define my self worth. If right now someone laughs at me it does not define my self worth i have seen a lot of people who would lose their self worth the moment someone laughs at them happens even if i go blank right now it will not define my self worth it happens that when you are supposed to speak your self worth is guided by people around you your self worth is validated by people on social media will go to the nth extent to even like pout like so that am i looking nice we look for validation from the external world if someone does not give me those likes and thumbs up my self worth goes down that hey i'm not good enough are you observing it what's happening your self worth is being played around by other people's opinion what else happens with a perfectionist think about it a perfectionist would avoid things 
they are someone who will not even try showing up. They are like, if I try showing up, and if something goes wrong, if something goes wrong, what will happen? My self-worth will be affected. So I will not show up. For example, there have been occasions where I had an invite from a university for a talk. I haven't prepared. I'm like clueless what to say, what not to say, what to say, what not to say. And in my head, I'm thinking that Devas, if you make an excuse, a bahana, that you know what, I'm not feeling well, and I'm stuck with like, some work, and I cannot show up, that's avoidance. What is it? Avoidance. You would avoid that situation to avoid that embarrassment. Why? Perfectionists have really high standards in their head. Now, it was foolish of me to expect that I can manage my family vacation time along with preparation of my TED talk. To give you an example, a parent might feel I'm not a good parent. Why? Because I'm not able to give time to my child. And I'm, I'm not a like, perfect parent. You might think that way. Yes. But think about it. If you are a working parent, you cannot be available at both the places. Yes? Yes or no? So this, this piece that yes, I will be available on certain occasions. I won't be available on certain occasions. I accept that. Than beating myself that, oh my God. I am not good enough. I'm not good enough. What else could be going in the mind of a perfectionist? Think about it. Accepting mistakes. Can you give yourself the permission to make mistakes? Many of us dream to be on a stage like this because this gives you visibility. This gives you eyeballs. But to get up from the seat and walk up to here and speak, our legs are shaking, our hands are shaking. Why? Observe what's stopping you. What's stopping you? It's again accepting mistakes. That it's okay. I may fumble right now. Many of you might not know about my story. I'm someone who was a stammerer all my life. That means haklana. That means when someone asks you your name, you get the bus. Now, if you live with this narrative all your life, that, oh gosh, that's how I am. I'm not even good enough. I can't even form a sentence properly. How will I even come up and speak? You would stay where you are. But when I accept my imperfections, I accept my flaws, I'll have the courage to walk up to the stage from there and speak in front of people. Think about it. How does the perfectionist in you stops you from expressing yourself? The learnings from being someone who was doubting himself that whether he will be heard or not to giving his seventh TED talk today, I would say that just to that one moment, I, I could have avoided, I could have backed out and thought that at least I, I got saved. Other one that at least let me show up. If things go wrong, that's fine. I accept myself and I'll still share the voice which I have been blessed with. I would rest my case over here and would remind you of your greatness, that you're just one thought away from your next imperfect, perfect, perfect, imperfect talk. Thank you so much.